Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to another episode of RC Pit Stop. Today we're going to be installing the electrics on the T-Magic B8ER Special Edition. So this is a 1.8 scale buggy that's a roller and believe it or not, I'm actually currently halfway through filming the unboxing video for this uh, because in that video, I'm going to be showing the full, you know, the, all the electrics installed in the car. Uh, but I figured rather than doing that off camera, why not do a quick RC pit stop video and show you how, you know, what my process is when I uh, decide, you know, what electrics I'm going to do and how I'm going to install them and all that sort of thing. So first things first, I'm going to move the car out of the way just briefly. Um, and uh, we're going to bring in the electrics that I've chosen. Now, these are not exactly brand new. This is the motor in the ESC I've chosen. It's a 4274 2000 kV. 150 MPSC, this is capable of 6S power. Um, and uh, if you've been following the channel for some time, you probably realize that this is the same co combo. It's actually the first combo that I used in my Armour Limitless uh, that got me a top speed of about 90 miles an hour. So I figured, you know, this thing's been sitting in the uh, in a spare parts bin for quite some time now. I don't really have a home for it. Why not use it on this buggy? Uh, for a servo, I actually went on a little bit on a cheap route and I picked up this guy. It's a 45 kilogram steering servo, but that's working at 7.4 volts. Uh, the BEC in this ESC can only go up to 6 volts. So at 6 volts, this guy is pumping out about 35 um, uh, kilograms and I think it's about 1.3 or 4 or something like that. Uh, or 0.13, something like that, I think it is. Uh, so it's it's quick enough and it's more than enough for this car. I may actually change this out in the future um, if I get my hands on a different servo that's probably a bit better suited for the buggy. So um, this is a brand new servo um, and I've had it you know, for a little while now, so I figured why not throw it in here. Uh, Futaba receiver uh, to hook up to my 4PM. And then of course we've got all our bits and pieces uh, that uh, come with this kit to obviously finish it off. So um, I've got my servo uh, horn over here. Uh, the zip tie that they include with this uh, car is actually to strap around the ESC to stop it from you know coming off. So uh, maybe we'll use that. Uh, some hardware and some double-sided tape for the electrics as well. Uh, the servo horn with a couple of little locking screws. So this is one of those servo horns that I'll actually clamps on to the um, um, to the actual little spline that this has got here. Uh, so it clamps on and you've got another screw that goes in on top as well. So that servo horn should work quite well. Uh, we've got these little bits here which I may uh, install in the rear wheels. And then of course we've got our pinion. Now they include a 14 tooth pinion. Um, I'm going to use it. I'm going to see how this feels and how it works. Maybe it's under geared, maybe it's over geared. I, I don't know, uh, but I'll go with the 14 tooth. It should be hopefully be somewhere in a happy medium and it should give me some good speed. So that's what I'm hoping for, uh, but we'll see uh, how it goes overall. All right, so let's bring the car back and uh, I'll show you how I sort of plan things out. Now, one of the things that I really like to do before I start pulling anything apart is actually just do a bit of a dry fit just to work out where everything's gonna go and sort of plan out my wire management as well. So once I get my electrics, um, I position the motor roughly where it's going to go and then I have to work out where my ESC is going to sit and how it's going to sit. So should I have it with the cables facing this way? Should I turn it around the other way? Um, all that type of thing. So you can see that I've already got a bit of a bend on these wires here where the motor is, so I'm bending them back. Um, and that's because um, you know, with all the best of intentions that Team Magic have got to provide this little uh, clip here for your wire management for your motor wires, um, it doesn't quite work in this instance because uh, when these wires go through here, the, it's kind of like roughly where the bullets are, so I can't really make a right hand turn uh, and avoid the battery. It's kind of go over the battery, so it doesn't really work for me in, on this occasion. So that's why I've decided to bend them back this way. My ESC is probably going to be sitting this way with the motor wires facing the outside of the car. And then the power cables are actually gonna be on the inside and I'll tuck them in there just for the time being to get them out of the way. My on and off switch, I think I'm gonna put it here, but I'm also gonna try and maybe see if it will work down the side here because that'll give me better access for when I wanna turn the car on and off. So having it down the side along here might actually be a bit better, but. I think over here might be safer because here we've got the drive shaft, the rear drive shaft we need to worry about. So um, that's something that I need to consider as well. And then of course we've got our cable which is gonna go straight into the receiver box there. I think it may be routed underneath the battery tray. 
Um, I'll need to figure that out as I go forward. Uh, now, the servo should be pretty straightforward. This guy is going to sit just over here. Um, and of course, uh, the cable is just gonna go straight up into the receiver box, uh, looped around somehow. So I'll figure that out as well. The receiver box is actually quite generous in size. So having all this excess cable is not going to be a much of an issue, I don't think. So I think that'll be okay. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that I do like to do before I actually start installing everything is um, doing a calibration on the ESC uh, just to make sure that everything is uh, is set correctly for my remote. Uh, so after I bind the receiver, I then do my calibration. So we'll do that really quickly for those of you who haven't done one of these before. Okay, now this should be pretty straightforward. All we need to do is plug our ESC into the receiver. So remember, it's one to turn, two to burn. So channel two is where our ESC needs to plug into. Uh, we need to get our battery. We need to plug that in, making sure that the ESC is off, of course. And uh, last but not least, we're going to obviously make sure our radio's on. We've got the right model selected if you have a multi-model memory uh, radio. And uh, you know, all your trims are set down to zero, all that type of stuff. So uh, make sure you're ready to do your calibration. Now to do your calibration on these ESCs, these are a, a Hobbywing ESC. It's very, very simple. You should have uh, a little set button on the slider switch. If you don't have a slider switch, you might have a push button switch. The rules are the same. Uh, just hold down that little set button and then turn on the ESC. You'll hear that little beeping sound. That means it's now in calibration mode. All we need to do is in the neutral throttle, so don't pull the, uh, the throttle, don't touch that, just press it once. So press the little set button. Go full throttle, press it again, and go full reverse and press it one more time. And release, and now you're fully calibrated. So now, we have reverse, we have forward, brake, and reverse. So everything is now fully calibrated, ready to go in the car. This is probably the safest way to do it uh, because you're not connected to anything. Um, you know, your car's not gonna fly off the bench or anything like that if you get the uh, calibration wrong. Uh, it's perfectly safe to do, as long as of course, you've got everything plugged in correctly. So uh, now we're ready to uh, start our install. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing here is actually mounting up the motor. Um, I kinda of like to do the motor first, make sure I get my gear mesh set up correctly, and then I'll worry about the servo and speed controller later on. Uh, now they give you these, uh, I think they're like eight millimeter screws, um, little socket head screws, um, to mount up to the motor. Uh, make sure that you've got you know, the two holes that you're gonna be mounting the screws to uh, laid out correctly, just so that you have the orientation of your cables right, so you're not mounting the motor sideways or something weird like that. Put a little bit of Loctite in those holes and you can tighten these uh, screws in there just a little bit. Uh, the motor mount that they actually give you does allow you to kind of fit those, um, those, those screws through the holes of the motor mount and then you can slide the motor up and down and then tighten it up. Now unfortunately this is one of those old fashioned motor mounts. You're gonna need an Allen key to be able to tighten up these screws because you won't be able to put a you know, a driver in here, it's just too long, uh, which is something that I did talk about in the unboxing and I'm hoping, uh, you know, Team, uh, Team Magic actually sort this out uh, in uh, future releases. Okay, so my motor is all mounted up there and I've got my pinion in there as well. I've got what sounds like good gear mesh. The car rolls nice and free. Keeping in mind that this has metal gearing right throughout, so it's going to make a bit of noise. Uh, now I can flip the car around the other side and I can start on my ESC. So as you can see, this entire battery tray has actually come out of the car with the ESC plate and the receiver box attached. So when I undid this, everything came out at once. You can separate the receiver box and the, the uh, ESC mounting plate. There are a couple of screws that allow you to do that if you, that's what you wanna do. But once you sort of like take out the battery tray, everything comes in one piece, which actually works out really, really well because it allows you to do all your wire management and everything um, outside of the car and then just bolt it back in with everything already set up. So super easy and very simple to do. Um, now, you'll notice that there's actually some slots cut out here uh, underneath the actual um, ESC tray. Um, and that is so that you can sort of manage your ESC wire that goes back to the receiver box. So if the ESC was facing 
Off to the side here, there's a slot allowing me to route the wire accordingly. If it was facing to the back, I could route the wire through this way and take it out that way. So they do uh, think about that, which is actually really good. The only thing they didn't think about was the zip tie uh, because um, I really have no way of putting the zip tie around here without interfering with the mount that goes onto the chassis. So um, I'm gonna leave the zip tie out for the time being. Now, as far as the uh, ESC cable goes, you can see that it's routed underneath the Velcro straps. There's a little channel that uh, allows you to kind of fit that ESC cable. Uh, it comes all the way up and then it, there's two cutouts on the receiver box there, just underneath one for the servo, one for the ESC, which means that this receiver box is not 100% watertight. Uh, you know, it's probably splash proof, but I wouldn't go submerging this car if that's your intentions, unless of course you modify this in some way to make sure no water gets in there. And then my ESC cable kind of comes in and it's just long enough to plug into my receiver just there. So it's just enough slack that it's not actually tight, which works out perfect. And because I'm routing it kind of going back this way, it's not going to interfere with my drive shaft which is A-OK. -okay. So now I've got everything pretty much set up. Uh, my on and off switch, which you probably can put down the side here. Um, you can put it there. I'm not gonna do it though, because this cable I think might get touched up by the, um, uh, the drive shaft. So I'm gonna put it on top of the diff. That's where I'm really planning on using it. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much it. All I gotta do now is just mount up the servo, put this guy back in place, and uh, we're pretty much done and ready to rock and roll. All right, and just like that, we are pretty much done with the exception of me putting the receiver box cover on. I wanted to leave that off just so I can show you how much room you've got in there once the receiver and the cables and everything uh, is in there. It's very nicely tucked away. Uh, I've done some cable management here for my ESC cables and motor wires. You can see how I've done that. Uh, so that actually looks really good there. I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Uh, the on and off switch, which I was gonna put on top right up until the end, I ended up putting it down the side as it's kind of intended to be, uh, mainly because there's no flat surface here. <laughs> uh, I didn't really take that into account, so it wasn't gonna stick on there very well. So in the end, I ended up putting it back there, but I did have to route my wire uh, over the red cable here just so that it uh, you know, it doesn't interfere with the drive shaft or anything like that. The ESC cable is not an issue uh, because once you tuck that in, so you can tug it on uh, from the receiver box, just pull that up as much as it'll go. It tightens up uh, really nice and tight to the uh, battery tray and it doesn't interfere with the drive shaft there. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now with the servo, um, I do recommend taking out the servo mount. There's three screws underneath. Take out that servo mount and mount your servo outside of the car and then you can just bolt it back on. It's very, very simple. Make sure you power on your servo first before you put your servo horn on. Um, this is because you don't know where the servo is you know, out of the factory. Uh, last thing you wanna do is mount your servo horn uh, on, the, on the servo and then power everything up and the servo just goes bzzz and uh, you know, it, it goes off to the side. Then you gotta unmount it and repeat the process again. Given that this servo horn has those clamping screws on there as well, uh, which you can really only access when the thing is out of the car, uh, you make sure you do that first before you mount it up there. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it, that's pretty much a wrap. This guy is ready to go, uh, both on 4S and 6S. I think it's going to work very, very nicely. I also mounted up my spoiler as well because they give you the screws uh, to mount this guy up, but um, they don't give you any washers underneath. So there's two long screws that go through here and then there is um, two locking nuts underneath, but they don't give you any washers. So I did add some washers there. Uh, just to protect the plastic from when you tighten the, you know, the bolts down and everything. But aside from that, um, yeah, this is uh, this is ready to go. It looks fantastic. I can't wait to uh, to take it out and give it a rip. And uh, yeah, that pretty much finishes up this episode of RC Pit Stop. If you're still here at the end, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button before you go. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll be speaking to you all next time.